Anda, pero si es la abuela. Sí. El año que la conocí nadie esperaba lo que iba a pasar. ¿Y cómo fue? Vivía en un sitio precioso. Yo no lo conocía, pero se notaba que era muy feliz. ¿Y entonces fuiste a verla o no? Cuando por fin pudimos viajar, pasé con ella unos días inolvidables. Porque me di cuenta de lo importante que es compartir el tiempo con las personas a las que quieres. Y sonreír. Y respirar. Seguimos con las conferencias de FIO, la Feria Internacional de Turismo Neotológico, en su decimosexta edición. Y a continuación, dentro del marco de Arte y Naturaleza, tendremos la charla de Pascalis Dougalis, llamada La fascinación del dibujo en el campo. Este artista griego, residente en Múnich, Alemania, mostrará su forma de trabajar en la que combina técnicas al aire libre y estudio y compartirá con la audiencia sus cuadernos de viaje. Comprobaremos cómo el trabajo de campo puede actuar como fuente de inspiración para crear una composición más sofisticada en el estudio. Pascalis Dougalis nació en 1970 en Kozani, Grecia. Durante sus estudios de teología en la Universidad de Tesalónica, comenzó a estudiar y trabajar como pintor de iconos, etapa en la que puso mucha energía y dedicación para tratar de encontrar su propio camino. El descubrimiento de una guía inglesa de aves en 1992 fue toda una revelación y la ha influido desde entonces. A partir de este momento, las criaturas de la naturaleza y en particular las aves dominaron su obra. Muchas gracias y que disfruten de la charla. Hello everybody, good morning to all of you. I want to welcome you on my talk about field work, field sketching, drawing birds and animals in the field. And uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't find a better place to start with it uh, than this artificial lake very close to the city. But uh, may I introduce myself first? My name is Pascalis Dugales. I'm a wildlife illustrator, artist living in Munich. Uh, field drawing and sketching has been an essential part of my uh, artwork uh, for many years now and has uh, helped me to develop my own style over the years. Uh, may I show you first my equipment? And I would start with my telescope, a pretty huge one, an 85 size, which is very the most in, important tool if you want to come closer to your subject. And equally important, a very, very stable tripod. Then I'm going to uh, show you the rest of my stuff, just like the shopping trolley where every kind of stuff can be packed in a sketchbook of course a folded chair countless pens and fine liners to draw a rucksack a backpack to, to pack in uh, the rest of your stuff and uh, somewhat later I'm going to show you how I'm walking in the field. It's a pretty cold day today. It's slightly cloudy uh, with 5 degrees Celsius. Not very comfortable to walk outside. But as you can see, I'm wearing always clothes. 
when outside. This is one of my tips to carry on. And uh, the rest uh, will be recorded in the studio. Thank you. Back in the studio now. Uh, let's start our visual journey browsing through the pages of my sketchbooks. And as the first, uh, I decided to show you an older sketchbook from uh, 2003. It was my f ever first visit to a breeding site of the Bonellis eagle, meanwhile one of my favorite birds. And as you can see, this is what I saw in the first morning there. The two chicks sleeping in the first morning light. Uh, I didn't manage to finish to, uh, the water color on the spot. I wasn't uh, confident enough to to do it at that time. And um, in any case, I'm particularly pleased with the result, despite the difficulties I had on the location. Um, before I'm going, uh, I'm going to turn the next page. Um, I want to say that uh, watching and observing birds, particularly uh, in particular uh, birds of prey during the breeding season, requires in any case a height, and um, you have to watch them from a certain distance. It was uh, uh, at least. Uh, 100 meters away from the breeding site um, using uh, hidden in a height and uh, using a very strong telescope to observe the bird and uh, I'm turning now the site to the next page this uh, has been the breeding site of the eagles As you can see in the middle, uh, you, the, the nest was exceptionally large. I'm sure that uh, it has been used by various generations of eagles over the years. And it was perfectly located in a crevice on the cliff face wonderfully sheltered uh, from rain and uh, wind and in the back in the distance uh, you can see just indicated the sea in the background and two alpine swifts flying uh, around. The, it was also a very common species in this area. This has been a very interesting behavior uh, of one of the eagle. I'm not, I can't say for sure if it was the female or male, but it was diving in the sky um, I presume that it has a kind of prey in uh, his talons uh, it was uh, letting the prey fall and then it was catching it again and it was diving and uh, uh, the hole has been repeated again and again Here's a, a typical rock study from, uh, from the spot, from the location in um, a beautiful backlight uh, situation. I wanted to capture the lighting on the uh, rock and in the next one uh, I can show you uh, the most detailed study I did on the spot of the two chicks in the nest. 
I did use uh, a sepia fineliner to draw the composition and then I it has been colored uh, using watercolors on the spot as you can see it uh, has been the most detailed the, the most detailed study I did during this trip it's a pretty small one but I can magnify make a zoom on the on the chicks I have to mention that the chicks were very uh, behave very friendly to each other which is actually rather uncommon among eagles but it, if I'm not sure the the breeding uh, the Bonellis eagles are uh, breeding it's very common among Bonellis eagles to breed two chicks to raise two chicks And uh, turning uh, the next page, you can see um, a single Bonelli's eagle chick study in pencil. A very beautiful small bird. You can imagine how powerful and strong and self-confident will be in few months it's unbelievable how quickly they grow the next page shows a wild olive tree shaped by the wind as you can see drawn in uh, using rolling pen, big pen in this case three simple sketches uh, featuring the chicks again while sleeping in various postures and this one is, uh, was um, one of the drawings I enjoyed most I've been uh, following the female flying around uh, it was raining I have to say and uh, it, it landed far away on the cliff and since I was following it uh, um, with a telescope I was able to spot it while sitting in the rain and I managed to do a um, somewhat detailed study of it it is actually pretty small but um, at least I managed to capture the expression, the facial expression, the feather, feathers and uh, somewhat of the surroundings, the plants occurring there. Uh, here's one of the eagles again, uh, sitting uh, high on the cliff above the nest uh, during rain again. It seemed to be a pretty rainy April uh, this year. Uh, as you can see I did uh, a couple of studies on one page and uh, the, reason, the reason was that uh, I wasn't pleased uh, with the hat in the black and white study to the right and uh, I've added one more detailed head, head study to the left using fine liners, sepia fine liners in this case Otherwise, I was pleased with the position and the details on the right one. Some migrating birds like Winchet on this page, very common of this season of the year. They are making a uh, stop on the island and they carrying on their flight to the north again. Uh, this has been a watercolor study of a fake tree very common there. A woodshot shrike also a migratory bird not a breeding one. 
on the island. Here we have uh, a cu the couple, the pair of uh, Bonellus eagle resting just at the opposite of the nest. At that particular day I didn't, uh, I gave up of watching the birds uh, from the height and um, I tried from below, from a certain distance of at least uh, 200 meters away to watch them using the scope and I've noticed that they used al almost the same place I was using uh, during the observation through the hide to rest. Here's a chucker partridge, very common uh, uh, chicken, wild chicken bird, uh, very common on the island, and, to, and to, uh, one of the main um, prey, maybe the most important uh, prey of the eagle, among with uh, wild rabbits. Wild rabbits and chukers uh, were also common in the on the neighboring islands. And uh, this has been the last drawing I did on the island, and actually a big surprise, huge surprise to me, a juvenile step eagle, which I discovered while walking back to the village, and I just noticed uh, above on the cliffs, uh, just the opposite of the main road, that uh, there has been something huge, a huge bird, uh, which has been uh, harassed by hooded crows and magpies. I, um, I used uh, instantly my scope to focus on the on the spot, on the certain spot, and I discovered that there has been a steep eagle um, there, enjoying, uh, obviously, migrating to the north too. Uh, enjoying the sun, but not unfortunately not for a long time, because due to the um, constant uh, disturbing by by the crows, uh, it was uh, forced to to change uh, his position and flew away. The scenery has been changed now, ten years later. Another sketchbook from another trip. Um, this has been a trip to northern Greece, where I'm coming from, and uh, this has been a wetland, very close, actually between the mountain Olympus and uh, Aegean Sea. A wetland very close to the sea, uh, a lagoon uh, system, very important uh, for birds. It's like this. I call it a prating call or, or a red winged prating call. One of my favorites. I love those birds. Very elegant and uh, they're pretty special to me. In this particular case, this one uh, was staying, enjoying the morning sun uh, for at least an hour on the same spot, and um, I was able to sketch it from the car using a stable mount from my telescope um, fixed uh, on the way, uh, car window and uh, I had my hands free to to sketch, to hold my sketchbook and my pants and uh, I was so happy to, to see this, uh, this bird cooperating maybe one of my best studies I've ever done from life in the wild. I'm turning the pages now and um, I'm coming to the next uh, almost finished study of uh, once again of a colored printing coal more classical posture from the from the side in an evening light sitting in an evening light backlighting 
it was also one of of my best during this trip I'm turning the pages of Huffin studies and um, we can see now a double page featuring two uh, B-eater uh, studies uh, B-eaters are maybe the most colorful um, birds, European birds Obviously, they they were just arrived from uh, their Africa, coming from Af Africa, heading to the north, and um, you can see to the left uh, half in study, and uh, more detailed one to the right. Obviously, the bird to the right uh, uh, was stayed uh, longer and enabled me to finish the study more half finished studies in this case of a Bart Welber this is the next page of the same book, a sketchbook now and as you can see um, there is a Bart Warbler, uh, one of the most uh, difficult birds uh, to draw, actually all the songbirds are very difficult to draw um, as you can see on the left page I did start more than once and tried to, to capture the bird but uh, without success and just above the bird I also started drawing a turtle dev which sadly flew away short after and at least I managed to finish the, maybe the most uh, the best uh, bird warbler study I've ever done from life and uh, regarding songbirds I would say that uh, they belong to the most difficult to, to draw from life because they are restless they're moving all the time around and uh, the only chance someone has to draw them is uh, during the breeding season because they prefer to mark their territory singing from certain on the top of certain bushes and uh, are getting more or less the same position the same posture if you are uh, patient enough you can stay on the spot and wait and wait to get the bird right to the same position and uh, this is what I did in this occasion and I managed to finish uh, this study uh, the next page shows uh, a pygmy cormorant not a very well known bird to uh, the Western Europeans, though it's uh, it is expanding its uh, distribution in Europe uh, in the latest years to the West, but it's still a rarity to the Westerners. And uh, but uh, in Eastern and Southeastern Europe, it's pretty common, at least in the wetlands. A beautiful one carrying its breeding plumage and uh, it was sitting very close to the reed bed in this uh, case uh, I would love to show it to you the only watercolor study I did uh, during this trip and uh, it shows a colored uh, pratting called uh, wild breeding which was very very difficult I have to say to spot because they perfectly camouflaged in the ground and uh, it was uh, a slight movement it, uh, it did uh, just change its position while breeding and it enabled me to spot it and uh, to make the watercolor on the spot from the car also without disturbing the bird uh, from, from a certain distance and I was exceptionally 
uh, pleased with that and I'm still I still am and um, I hope to, to find the time uh, to to make some more uh, studies from life from these magnificent birds in the future and back now I'm back again and um, I'm going to share with you my impressions for from one of most uh, memorable uh, trips journeys I ever had uh, it was the April of 2014. I was um, fortunate to to make a trip to Extremadura and particularly to two special places uh, just like um, Monfragüe National Park in the north and uh, Serena in the south. And uh, I'm going to start with the first part of my visit to uh, Extremadura as I told you, I, I was visiting the Monfragüe National Park uh, in the first uh, during the first week of my visit, and uh, this has been the very first drawing I done on the spot. It was uh, the very f first day. Uh, it was uh, the last day of March actually, and um, the spot uh, maybe many of you know it. It was Portilla del Tietá the very last uh, um, outlook point, um, watching point uh, in the National Park, a fantastic place with um, an eagle owl breeding uh, place as you can see in my drawing and um, sp um, Spanish or uh, I Iberian uh, imperial eagle and a small colony of uh, griffin vultures as well um, short-toed uh, eagle flying nearby. It was a fantastic experience and uh, I would love to share my experiences with you. As I told you this has been um, the very first drawing from my very first day. Uh, fortunately I met a few other uh, bird watchers on the spot who were already there and knew what to look at and uh, showed me the the eagle owl nesting site a fantastic bird and uh, experience this has been the second uh, study of the owl half finished as you can see And I'm going to the next page, uh, which shows uh, griffin vultures in the rain. Uh, I, I felt exceptionally uh, fortunate and grateful uh, that uh, this uh, special point uh, provides such a shelter from rain and wind. And um, I was uh, just I was sitting very in the comfortable, I would say, uh, shelter of the watching point and uh, I was uh, watching, observing and sketching uh, this bird uh, during, during the heavy rain. I have to say that uh, it wasn't easy to make uh, a lot of watercolor studies on the spot since my time I was limited and I tried to to do as much as possible studies on the spot but um, in this occasion and using the shelter of the um, of this point of Portilla I managed to do also one actually the only one uh, landscape showing the cliffs where the griffin vultures and the eagle owl, owl uh, bred and um, it was also um, a challenge for me to, uh, to test uh, the possibility to do a landscape on the spot and also on exactly at the same point I managed to do 
also another watercolor showing a one of um, a griffin uh, vulture, a vulture pair and their chick in the nest it was sleeping at this uh, and this uh, during this particular session and the background the very interesting formations of the rocks I really enjoyed painting them and um, at least it was the last day in Mafragwe um, I managed to do a color study a watercolor study on location of the eagle owl it was the third and the last uh, of my colored uh, studies on the spot and then uh, after that I moved to the south uh, to Serena and uh, at stay, I stayed in the small city of Castuera um, I'm back uh, I'm back again and um, as I told you before I headed um, to the south of Extremadura to in the in the region of uh, Serena a very plain uh, landscape uh, completely absolutely different as the the rocky on the rocky cliffs and uh, uh, the Hesas uh, landscape of the north with the with the cork oaks and um, uh, the the landscape uh, has changed dramatically, but uh, also the bird, the bird, uh, the bird life, in the landscape, and one of the most uh, um, of my targets um, species. I always wanted to to watch from a um, close uh, distance and uh, have uh, some encounters with it was the Montagu's Harrier and uh, this has been my very first drawing on the spot showing a male one uh, hidden on the ground resting obviously or enjoying the first uh, sunlight a fantastic bird pretty inspiring location and this has been a um, one of the most common birds, I guess, in this place, a lesser kestrel sitting in the front of a farm in the middle of the nowhere. A half finished, actually, an unfinished drawing. I just managed to separate lights and darks of a female area. And then I moved um, to the eastern part of, of Serena in the plain. There were plenty of corn bindings just like this, sitting in the ground and singing occasionally, but it posed uh, beautifully for me. Um, and I managed to do a, a real study of it on location up to the end before it flew away and this is how the landscape uh, looked like uh, absolutely plain without trees without buses um, step like uh, landscape as you can see, the, the, there is the road, a dirty road, leading through the landscape. I left to the left and the right. Uh, there were everywhere sheep, uh, merino, merino sheep, uh, I guess, and uh, on 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 the sky, you can see. Uh, several vultures, most of them griffon vultures but also also a, a pair of uh, black vulture circle make their circles 
of my hat in the heat of the day. And the next drawing shows also one of the most common birds in this region, a Calantra lark, one of my favorite birds. I know them well from Greece, from the region where, I where I'm coming from, and uh, I enjoy it uh, the time sketching it, try trying to, to get the posture well the light conditions as well the the facial expression at the same time and I'm going to show you the clip uh, very soon um, I managed to do some video through the telescope and uh, when I uh, came back home I I did a more detailed uh, watercolor based on this particular study and on the video. Um, this is the way I'm, uh, ver I very often used to work when it's out, uh, outdoors, uh, when the time uh, doesn't allow to, to make a series or a more detailed uh, series of studies or a more detailed study on the spot. I try to use the, and, uh, I have the feeling that the bird or the animal uh, shows uh, a very uh, nervous behavior and uh, it's uh, very, looks to be very restless. I try to capture in video as much as I can when I'm back in studio and try to analyze uh, the captures and uh, in order to understand better movement uh, behavior and uh, anatomy of the bird or the animal. In this case, as I told you, I'm going to show you the clip, the video clip soon, and here it is. And uh, this is the way I'm working uh, very often. To the left, the detailed field study of the Calantralac. And to the right, the watercolor study done in the studio. And um, based exclusively on this study, at least the birds itself. And I managed to add uh, more details and background, inspired by the video I did on uh, I did uh, uh, take also on location. And now I'm trying to focus on the hand of the bird. And show some other details, it's like the legs, the toes, which are very, very important to me. They have to be drawn correctly and lighted also correctly. And now I'm heading to the next one. Here is a study of a um, little owl, a very evident species in the plains. And above, just a quick sketch showing the design at the back of its head. Very common among owls, just like uh, a pygmy owl and um, little owl of course and many other round-headed owl species
the next picture it shows here. Ruins of um, an old castle, I guess, or a farm. I'm not sure. It look very medieval with a lot of birds on it. like hippos. The next drawing uh, it's showing uh, let me focus on the bird properly it shows actually a woodshot shrike, obviously a male one which was singing on the spot and I was very pleased to be able to capture uh, the whole scene and put it down to the paper um, and um, as I did in the f um, uh, former case of um, of the collateral arc I did also the same with the Witcher trike and I did some uh, video too uh, using uh, just putting the camera to the video camera to, on the eyepiece of the, my telescope and uh, combining um, the field study and uh, the field the the video footage on the spot I managed I managed to do a composition in the studio of this beautiful, beautiful songbird. I'll try to do some to zoom on its head again just to show detail and light. I really enjoyed doing this watercolor. There are so many ways to supplement the real uh, field study and um, getting ideas to a future which can lead to a future composition or uh, use the field study as uh, the main uh, subject of an illustration or a painting. And uh, here it is, one of the birds I was dreaming to see one day. It is the, it is the male of the little bastard. Um, I'm not sure, but um, well, sadly, uh, the population on the Iberian Peninsula is uh, decreasing. As I heard from several uh, specialists and people who know the situation uh, in uh, both countries, uh, Spain and Portugal. But I was uh, fortunate enough to to get some uh, subuse from this uh, magnificent male in the um, uh, western, in the eastern part of Serena. And um, some getting some very close views. Uh, this has been um, my field study, uh, which also inspired me to to do um, actually two pictures. I went back in studio, and I'm going to show you them uh, after 
the short clip you're going to see as uh, in the former cases I did some uh, video footage on location just to capture um, light and color and um, I used to, of course uh, this one as reference material to uh, to be able to create uh, a watercolor first and a, a more detailed uh, gouache painting uh, after that. Since you have seen the clip uh, right now, um, I'm uh, glad to show you now the the watercolor of the little bastard meal, based exclusively um, as the two former uh, studies I showed you before on uh, on the field study and the video footage due to location. As you can see, uh, it helped me a lot to capture the certain light on this image. Some time uh, later, um, I decided to, to give it a go and uh, do a more detailed composition made actually in the initial uh, field study uh, using the first uh, the, the same posture but um, I changed I have changed uh, the background a little bit um, and I'm going to show you the clip also where the background uh, is coming from. Uh, this particular painting has been uh, painted uh, using wash colors, the opaque uh, water colors, and uh, I'd love to show you some detail of the head in this case. I'm going down to the rest of the body. This has been a, a real exciting trip for sure and um, memorable, unforgettable, um, a trip which uh, provide, uh, provide, uh, which has provided a lot of uh, inspiration, uh, knowledge, uh, uh, new species, um, a lot of experiences and um, And uh, I have to, I'm sure I have to repeat it one day again. Heading uh, slowly towards end of my presentation, I decided uh, to make a demonstration uh, showing the benefits of uh, the live drawing. And uh, the reward is uh, that the time. I spent outdoors, uh, provides countless images of a species, 
under uh, different light conditions and uh, these images are saved in my brain as valuable knowledge for future use and uh, to support uh, this statement I am going to draw for you uh, a bird uh, everybody knows uh, a thrush actually uh, it could be a blackbird belongs also to thrushes and I'm going to start from the eye because the eye is the start, always my starting point when drawing independently of uh, if it uh, my subject is a bird, mammal or ever human being uh, when I have the eye done I'm going to get it somewhat closer. I'm able to estimate the distance between eye. Sometimes the birds have an eye ring around the eye. There's a distance between eye and the base of the beak where the nostrils the holes where the the bird is breathing are located and now I have to make it somewhere smaller Now I have to do the big, the upper mandible, and the lower mandible of the big. Then I'm heading to the crown, the upper side of the head. And the throat below the back. I'm going then to to make some lines stronger with a bigger, a heavier fine liner. Here we have, sorry, we have the ear covered. And the back of the head. Now is the head almost completed. I'm getting now the other fine liner and I'm going to make some lines stronger to support some features You can edit here as well. You can. You're, you're not sure that they could help to support the facial expression of the bird. And I guess I have to to make the crown somewhat darker. And 
and now that should be enough. That uh, that is a rather detailed head study, but I'm going now to show you how to do some studies of uh, capturing the so-called genes of the bird, showing the whole bird in various postures, and such drawings can be done only by using by using visual memory. Um, by the way, I I was drawing today some field fair thrushes just outside my windows, and. These drawings provide me with the visual material I need to do this thrushes convincingly. As you can see, I'm able to draw the head pretty quickly and uh, take note of the posture of the bird. The weather was today extremely cold and uh, this is the, the posture the, the thrushes are taking. Not only all the thrushes but many songbirds uh, trying to, to protect themselves from the cold. Churchills, primaries, and the thrust is almost finished. I'm not going to do more details on it, it's just, it's just only the posture. On the twig. The branches, how it was sitting, and um, this is actually a quiet a resting position. But um, in an other case, it could be alert. I'm going to show you a thrash. in an alert position that's absolutely the language of the body is completely different. You can see the, the difference in the neck length and the back. The whole body uh, is in tension. Of, of feathers should be drawn also correctly. Look the tail to the right. Sometimes they get more of the tail up and down. 
I'm sure you have seen this with blackbirds in your garden maybe. Shoulders and uh, now I'm going to add the legs. In this case the legs are almost completely visible. Upper tail cover, upper tail covered. Just indicate the legs. So some tension in the body. That's it actually the demonstration I was planning to do for you. Uh, I know that the time is limited of course but uh, I hope that uh, even this uh, short uh, presentation uh, could motivate and inspire some of you to get your pencils, get your pen, uh, every kind of material you are familiar with, go out, uh, go to the nature and try to capture down on the paper uh, its beauty. I'm sure you're not uh, great it at all and uh, wish you uh, a lot of luck Good luck in your efforts and uh, many many thanks uh, for watching my presentation. Thank you. Hello everybody, my presentation is now coming to its end and I hope that some of you will be inspired and motivated to go outdoors and capture the beauty of nature. I knew from the beginning that the time was pretty limited and I tried to include uh, as much information as I could. In this point I'd like to express my gratitude and uh, say a huge thank you to all of the staff of uh, Extremadura uh, Bedwatching Fair and in particular Vanessa Palacios for inviting me and uh, giving me the chance to share my thoughts with you. I hope uh, that I'm going to meet you in person one day and thank you all of you for watching.